Hello and welcome, welcome back to Bookmark Chronicles. Today I am going to do a drunk book review of The Other Black Girl by Zakia Dalila Harris. Y'all can thank Robin for this. She was reading it for Black Alinathon, somehow wrote me into reading it as well. And then while I was sprinting, everyone in the chat was like, but you can do a drunk book review. So here we are to do a drunk book review. I felt like for this review, I would need a little bit more than wine. So we're gonna be drinking tequila. Some of my coworkers were telling me that they drink tequila with seltzer, which I had never done before, but I feel like it was low key kind of genius because at least I won't be as dehydrated as if I was drinking it with something else. So my lovely friend gifted me this bottle of tequila when I graduated from grad school. And then I picked up blueberry lemon seltzer hopefully that's good and in case i don't like it i also got a little thing of lemonade too to splash in there if needed i probably should have gotten a shot glass to measure this out but we're just gonna we're gonna wing it here oh that's actually kind of good That is a lot of tequila. I'm gonna add in a little bit of the lemonade. Oh, still a lot of tequila. <laughs> it's fine. So in The Other Black Girl, we are following Nella Rogers, who is an editorial assistant at Wagner Publishing. She is the only black person with the company, and she has really tried to push for more diversity, and it really just didn't go well. But then one day, Hazel appears, and now there are two black women in this office. Nella's super excited about that. However, shortly after Hazel starts working there, Nella starts receiving threatening letters telling her to leave Wagner and that people are after her, and she starts to believe that it is Hazel who is behind all of it. Typically I would do a spoiler free part however I'm not doing that this time there's just going to be spoilers all throughout this. Typically I would say don't watch if you are planning to read this however I don't really recommend that you do. I would not recommend this book to you. I rated it one and a half stars and it really just was not good and I have so many freaking questions and this really was not a great experience for me. So obviously I had heard all of the terrible things about this book from plenty of black booktubers and book reviewers and then my reading experience wasn't exactly good either so I just knew this wasn't gonna be good overall first and foremost uh, when you pick up the book it's blurred by Emily St. John Mandel I read station 11 it was boring as fuck red flag so then when I finally agreed to buddy read this with Robin I went to see if I could place a hold on Libby and it was just immediately available nobody was in line red flag then uh at some point the Libby audiobook stopped working like it stopped playing and I could not get it to play um I took a break from it did something else and then when I came back I was able to start playing it again but then so you know how you can set the fast forward and rewind times mine is just 15 seconds so I was listening to the audiobook and I was like oh wait I missed something so I went to hit the 15 second rewind button and it jumped back like four chapters so then I tried to get it back to where I was and it stopped working again red flag so I stopped listening to the audiobook on Libby I'm able to find it on Scribd so I start listening to the audio there however I really was not paying as much attention as I could have been like I said the only reason that I didn't DNF this is for this video so I was like you know what I'm not really retaining anything so let me get an ebook to follow along with so I went back to Libby to place a hold for the ebook again it was immediately available nobody was waiting red flag eventually I finished it and here we are but aside from all of those previous red flags the reading experience in general was just not enjoyable at all i did already know one twist so i was waiting for that to happen however part of the reason that i wasn't paying as close attention as i could have been was it was boring nothing about this story was interesting to me so the reading experience wasn't just bad because the plot sucked it also just wasn't interesting at all Oh god, it not only tastes like straight tequila for the most part, the smell just hit me in the face. Alright, so I got my handy dandy notebook, otherwise I really wasn't going to remember anything. So let's go ahead and start off with the characters. 
obviously we have our main character Nella. Fuck this bitch. <laughs> I really don't know how else to put it to you. Like at first she seems relatable because you know the things that she faces at work and her desire to become an editor and all of these other things that I was like okay yeah I'm here for it and then you f the further you get into the story the more you're just like okay. Nella has a best friend Malaika. I liked her. I did like her a lot and I have some questions about her in the end. Hazel is the other black girl who comes in and who Nella sort of starts to butt heads with. Owen is Nella's boyfriend. He is white. Like the fact that he's white is very, it's like in, integral to the story for some reason. And I don't really know that it needed to be. There's Richard Wagner, who is obviously the owner of Wagner Publishing. And he's he's got some stuff with him as well uh there was a previous black woman duo at wagner who published this book called burning heart that was a top seller and then one of the authors so the authors are diana and kendra ray kendra ray then like went off the grid after an article was released of her saying something like anybody who's white ain't right with me or something like that um and she was basically blacklisted from the industry and diana who was her best friend didn't really do anything about it didn't speak out against her didn't come to her defense and then we find out more about diana later we find out a little bit more about kendra ray as well and then there's also a woman named shawnee who's trying to get in contact with nella but trying to do it on the dl where where do i start nella works for this editor named vera um she's been working for her about two years before hazel comes into the picture and at one point vera asked nella to read a manuscript I think it was called Needles and Pens by this white man, the opioid e epidemic. Oh my god, why can I say that word? It's supposed to be about the opioid epidemic, but for some reason this white man felt the need to make one of his characters a black woman who is chock full of stereotypes. So Nella reads this and obviously is uncomfortable. It feels racist, it feels like this character whose name is Chartricia, which is a play on the color chartreuse, is a caricature. And so at first she doesn't want to say that, but she's talking to Hazel and eventually Hazel convinces her to speak her mind. And Hazel's like, you have to do it. It's the right thing to do, blah, blah, blah. And then what happens later on is that Hazel gets asked to read it as well. And Hazel does the exact opposite, totally throws Nella under the bus. Is like, oh, a lot of people of color are gonna relate to this and they're really gonna feel seen and da, 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 da. And Nella's like, bitch, what the fuck? Like, you're the one that told me to do this and now I have to walk on eggshells around everybody in the office because I made this white dude cry. And that whole scene, it was very, like, these are the reasons that this character made me uncomfortable. And the author is like, you're calling me racist. And he storms out and he's crying and da, 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 da. And then, she apologizes multiple times and then her boss makes her apologize again and they move forward with publishing this book and don't take any of her criticism into consideration and like yeah that's fucked up but there's so much more behind all of that that was just super fucking cringe and really weird and it was a lot So after all of this, Nella starts receiving threatening letters telling her to leave Wagner, that it's dangerous, she doesn't belong. And she really only gets like two or three notes. However, at first she's like, oh, maybe like this author is so pissed at me that he wants me fired. And then she's like, maybe it's Hazel. Hazel must have done it. The relationship between the two of them is so weird because it's like it ebbs and flows between them being friends and them being enemies. and. It was just fucking exhausting, honestly. Also regarding the structure, there are four parts to the book. And the first part is solely from Nella's POV. And then in the second part, we get flashbacks to when Kendra Ray and Diana were working with Wagner. And at first I really didn't understand why we were getting these time jumps because it didn't really seem to make sense to me. Um, it sort of comes together in the end, but like, I kind of feel like there wasn't really a reason for any of it. So as I mentioned, like Hazel and Nella go back and forth between being friends and enemies. During one period when they're friends, Hazel invites Nella to this spoken word event that she is hosting because she runs this youth program and she finds out that Richard is going to be there. So Nella decides to go and she brings Owen and Malika with her. 
Um, and while they're there, so they're in like a hair cafe that is owned by Hazel's boyfriend's sister. And while they're there, Hazel gives Nella this hair grease. It doesn't have a label. You don't know what ingredients are in it. Well, she used a little bit of it. And then at the end, she's at like a hair party at Hazel's house with a few other women. Malika's with her and Hazel like greases her scalp and then wraps her hair for her. There's also a storyline with this activist, Jesse Watson. Jesse Watson, who is very outspoken, very opinionated, very pro-black and, you know, ruffles a lot of people's feathers and Nella really likes this person. She reaches out to him at some point. He is sort of taking a hiatus and then Richard Wagner tells her that um, Jesse is thinking about writing a book and he wants to do it with Wagner so she might get the opportunity to edit. She's also told that she's going to get promoted in the next couple of weeks, whatever. So this man comes in and Nella's sort of grilling him because she's like, oh, what are you going to write about? Is it going to be police brutality, economic inequality? What are you, what are your plans? And he goes, oh, well, it's actually going to be a graphic novel and it's not really political. And she's like, oh, okay, that's, that's interesting. And then she's like looking at him and like taking in his appearance and realizes that he has also been using this grease and his connection to Wagner was actually Hazel. So she was the one that sort of brought him in uh, to work with the publishing company. And she starts to realize like, oh shit, even he has been changed by this undercover agency of other black girls because it's like a thing. This is an actual fucking thing. It's like a whole movement, I guess, but there's also a resistance. And that's where that woman Shawnee comes in. Shawnee is the one that is trying to warn Nella because she had previous interactions with Hazel, but she was using another name like Eva or something like that. So Shawnee's a part of the resistance. She's trying to save Nella essentially. And it just doesn't really go as planned. At one point she and Nella are supposed to meet. Nella sees her from across the street, but doesn't approach her. And she sees Shawnee get like thrown into the back of a car and then sort of disappear. I know I'm not really explaining this well because it's, I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but like none of it really matters, honestly. And I still don't recommend it. So just bear with me. Near the end of the book, after Jesse Watson comes in, Hazel finally confronts Nella and is like, I tried to help you. You kept resisting. Just tell me yes. It will make everything so much easier for you. Life will be so much better if you just do what I'm asking you to do. Just accept this. Let it happen. And like, I knew about all of that. I knew that that was going to happen. What I did not expect is that Nella was just going to be like, all right, yeah brainwash me with this fucking hair grease and then i will help you brainwash other people <sighs> i have so many questions before i get into my questions though i do want to point out a few plot points and sort of open this up to all of y'all who have read this who have heard about it and chose not to read it and and to those of you who have read it for whatever reason so there is a part where sophie the white girl in the office calls Nella Hazel and her excuse is that they're wearing the same color but I mean first of all these two don't look like different skin complexions Hazel's taller Hazel has locks Nella has a fro also Hazel was wearing like a light purple lilac -y color and Nella was wearing a darker purple like violet cool cool great you also find out that Diana is behind the grease and is working with Richard they were or maybe still are sleeping together which I, I like I don't care it's not that important to the story it was also just really fucking weird the way all of that was revealed so I don't know there's also a point in time where Nella is sort of filling Owen in on what's going on and he compares her experience of being the only black girl at work to when he's the only straight guy at brunch with all of her friends. 
I'm sure I don't have to explain that that is not the same and if I do I need you to take several seats and unpack why you think those are similar. And then at the end of the book when Hazel confronts Nella and tells her exactly what is going on, Nella gives in, lets it happen, and then she turns around and uses an alias, um, Delilah Henson, which for me sounds a little too close to the author's name and goes after Shawnee who I is she working in publishing or for like um a newspaper or a magazine or something and Shawnee obviously already knows who Nella is so she's fucking terrified but it, that's how it ends in addition to my questions I did highlight a few things when I did have the uh ebook so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna read a few for you just to really give you an idea of um, how torturous this fucking book was. I just want to point out a few things. Again, this is sort of all over the place, but like I really, I cannot review this book in a way that is concise because my thought process while reading it was pretty much what the fuck all the way throughout. Um, one thing that I highlighted and I just, little things like this, I'm just really wondering, like, I feel like the entire time that I was reading this, not only for little things, but also for major things that actually impact the plot, in my head, I was just playing Cardi B screaming what was the reason the entire time. The spoken word event that Hazel hosted was at a hair cafe, like I said, it's owned by her boyfriend's sister. Her name is Juanita. So when she meets Juanita, Nellis says, she was clearly drunk, maybe even a bit coked out. Why? First of all, where, where did that come from? What evidence do you have in either way? Why is that mentioned in the book? What does that have to do with literally anything that is happening here? When, Nella confronts Hazel about what she said in front of the company about the book Pens and Needles and the Chartreuse character. She's like, why did you flip the script? Like, what the fuck? And Hazel's like, there's this amazing phenomenon called code switching. Um, <laughs> code switching does not mean pretending to believe in things that you don't. I just want to make that clear in case anybody was confused for any reason and she was like trying to be sarcastic but it was kind of just like a dick move like <laughs> you're being such a bitch right now and it's so unnecessary and then even when Nella was telling Hazel about the notes that she was getting and how they seem threatening Hazel is like oh well like this is a hate crime Nella's response is oh well there wasn't any mention of the n-word hate crimes can exist without the use of racial slurs again just clarifying in case anybody was confused about that although you, you shouldn't be so also like why would you just never mind we're just gonna keep going there was also a slip up on Richard's part that was never examined so Hazel tells Richard about the notes that Nell has been receiving obviously he's aware of the full fucking situation but he says if you get more, don't throw them out, give them to me instead. And if she, sorry, this person contacts you in any other way, email, text, blah, blah, blah. And Nella just like doesn't address that at all. And I'm just like, bitch, did you not pick up on that? Are you stupid? And then the conversation between Hazel and Nella, where Nella just decides to be fucking compliant with all this shit. I'm not gonna read the entire little monologue that Hazel gave, but I did highlight bits and pieces of it. So she pulled out of her bag the blue container of grease that Nella has seen before and a pink one and when she's talking about the pink one she said this one helps you hold on to your essence your blackness it's optional not all the girls worry as much about using it but it's good to have in situations like this Jesse meeting they'll make you more amenable when it comes to working with and for white folks but the best part is they'll preclude any guilt you may feel from doing so you won't feel like you're compromising anything no selling out no public versus private disposition you won't feel the numbing too much it could be worse and then when Nella asks if all the other women who have been affected by this hair grease are doing it willfully, Hazel tells her that some of them are willing, but a lot were referred to Dick, meaning Richard Wagner, who then refers them to me and a few other black girls to fix. This is black girl magic in its purest form. So then at that point, what we realize is that Nella has not been using this hair grease at all. She has pretty much just become 
a part of the system willingly, which is like, what can I even say, you know? Um, and then afterwards she agrees to actually start using the hair grease and to use it on other people against their will, which is just fucking weird in so many ways. During that same interaction, Hazel tells Nella, like, just let it happen, but it's time for you to go. And Nella's like, well, why can't I stay here? And Hazel's response is because there can only be one of us per office, which again, <laughs> what the fuck? When I finished reading this, I had a lot of questions. One of them was the fact that Nella like does all of this digging into Hazel and to figure out like what the fuck is going on, uncovers the truth and then it's just like, yep, I'm gonna be a part of this. And I think that's probably the reason that a lot of people hate Nella, which is absolutely fair. Some people are like, oh yeah, Nella's not like, likable or whatever and it's like it's one thing to not be a likable character it's another thing to just be this i don't know vile despicable i feel like none of those words are really enough to express what i really want to say this fucking hair grease is never explained we never find out what's in it we never figure out how it works so we find out that Diana is part of the reason that all this is happening, but we don't really know what her motive is. Let me preface that with the fact that, uh, like I said, there were a lot of times where I fucking spaced out, so I may have missed something, but I don't think it's ever actually explained why Diana was doing this. The only thing I can guess at is to prevent another Kendra Ray situation where she like publicly badmouths white people, but I mean, was she wrong? Like she literally pretty much said that she didn't want to work with anybody white in publishing. She would prefer to have black editors and agents and whatever the fuck, which isn't a bad thing. So like, what was the point? Also, Kendra and Diana were best friends. So again, what was the motive? Also, I have a question about the genre of this because it's supposed to be like a thriller, a mystery. And sure, there are mysterious elements, but it very much read as a contemporary to me at least maybe because i went in with the lowest of expectations perhaps that's the reason but it is also i think on goodreads um labeled as both contemporary and fiction as well as mystery and thriller so i don't really know what the fuck the genre is i'm also curious as to how this book has a 3.41 on goodreads and a 3.48 on the story graph who is rating this book that highly? Truly, I need to know because it doesn't make any sense. I also forgot to mention the fact that Nella constantly compares herself to Hazel and like Hazel's existence makes her question her blackness and it just felt fucking weird. So to the people who like this book, I have a question. Bring it in. Um, especially white people, particularly white women. Um, why do you like this book? What about black women being brainwashed against their will to become more palatable to white people is enjoyable for you? Genuine question. I was looking at reviews after I finished reading it and like wrote all my thoughts out and someone called it like a genre defying masterpiece or some shit, a white woman. Um, and I just, why? why do you feel that way because yes it does address microaggressions and respectability politics but it does so poorly i cannot come up with a valid reason for why this book was written and ended the way it did i can't and i ended up watching an author interview um <laughs> which didn't make anything any better because essentially nella is the author which like, what does that say about you? What was the reason? And in that interview, the author said that she wanted people to come away with another example of how black women can be, which again, huh? So your example of how black women can be is to come after other black women, push them out of their companies and industries, turn on each other for whatever like what i don't understand i truly don't 
And then for everyone who has said, oh, this book is a cross between Get Out and The Devil Wears Prada, Get Out is about escaping from white people, not each other. We're not supposed to be coming after each other. We're supposed to be helping each other out. And how is it comparable to The Devil Wears Prada? The, the white people? I, I mean, shit, at least in The Devil Wears Prada, I actually kind of liked Miranda. I guess there's the headbutting between Andy and Emily. Is that her name? Emily? Whatever. I mm, no, those uh those descriptions are not accurate. Editing right, I figured it out. This is similar to the Devil Wars Prada because both Andy and Nella change everything about themselves in order to fit in. The only difference is that Andy realizes at the end that she was wrong. So really, you're better off watching the Devil Wars Prada than ever reading this book. All right, I'm gonna stop there. Uh, like I said, I gave this a one and a half star. And in order for me to figure out my rating, I thought to myself, do I hate this as much as I hate the Echo Wife? And I'm not comparing them as far as like elements because the Echo Wife is sci-fi-ish and whatever. Um, but just overall, I hated the Echo Wife, I hated this, I rated them the same one and a half star so that's where that came from so let me know if you have read the other black girl hopefully you haven't and if it's on your tbr please take it off i would love to hear everyone's thoughts on this my questions still stand for the people who actually like this i want to know why because i truly do not understand and i'm not judging you i'm not shaming you but with all of the elements of this book and the way that it ended and what it says about black women i just i truly don't understand so let me know all your feelings about this. I'm going to watch Chicago Fire because I need something to cheer me up. Um, otherwise, that's all I have for you today and I'll see you in the next video.